Thank you. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. All Thank right. You. So let's see. Good afternoon, New Philadelphia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. Another Sunday. Welcome to another day, praise the Lord. Yes. For the day that the Lord has made, let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Once again, we're gathered together electronically to praise and worship the Lord. And once again, I want to thank y'all for loving God enough to listen to me for a few minutes. And um, I just want y'all to know that I just truly, truly love each and every one of you. Just like uh, the comedian uh, George Wallace says, I love y'all. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> anyway, I'm thankful to God for every person that decided to join this communication today and to worship our Lord and Savior. Um, I'm thankful because, um, like I said, because y'all love God so much. And not only that, y'all love each other so much. We all love each other. I, I, I think that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, you, you might not find that in everybody's church, but we love each other in New Philadelphia. And I, I, I am so glad that I'm a part of that. Um, I've had my own little spiritual journeys and I've done my, my share of moving from church to church. But um, once I came back to New Philadelphia, I knew that I was at home spiritually. So it was, wasn't a need to leave again unless God directed it. So uh, I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for you all. So God bless you. And with that being said, ain't it a blessing to be virtually gathered together on the second Sunday of January, 2023? <laughs> Ain't it a blessing to be in the Technological Fellowship of Believers on the second Sunday of January, 2023? Amen. Ain't it a blessing to be seen and not viewed, to be looking down at the grass instead of up at the grass? Man. To not only wake up, but to get up. Yes. Amen. Ain't it a blessing to be on the second Sunday of January, 2023. Amen. 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 God is doing amazing and wonderful things for all of us, New Philadelphia, not just in our collective, um, our collective lives, our, our lives together as a congregation, but he's doing amazing and wonderful things for us each and every day. It might not seem like it, but individually, God is doing an amazing thing for us. I mean, the first thing, when he allows us to wake up. Amen. Amen. That miracle of returning to life at the beginning, to begin a new day. That's amazing. Yeah. And only God has yeah. control of that. Amen. Amen. You know, so um, um, if you can get on that part, once you wake up and get up, start moving, and you start being about the business of, 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 of what God has uh, planned and orchestrated for you, you know, everything else is just, is just extra. All right. It's an extra blessing. That's a, this, that's just the gravy. Amen. Amen. 
And because of that, because of the fact that God is doing an amazing thing or a wonderful thing in our lives each and every day, then we should be thanking and praising him each and every day. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, Francis, if you uh -huh. will, if you will, please read Acts 1, Acts first chapter, verses 4 through 8. Act 1? Yes, Acts 1, 4 through 8. Okay. And the word reads, Jesus ascends to heaven. The former treaties have I made, O Theophy Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach mm -hmm. until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father, which says, he have heard of me. You said two, Francis. four, right? Francis. Uh-huh. Is that Acts 1? I thought it was. Hold on. Yeah, I'm on Acts 1. Establishment of the church. Four through eight. Hold on. Yeah, that's Acts one. Start, you start on the first. Four through eight. eight. Yeah, the four through eight. Oh, I'm sorry. I started at the first. I started okay. at the first. I'm sorry. My bad. That's all my right. Bad. That's all right. Okay. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He, ye have heard of me. But John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the othermost part of the earth. Yes. The Trinity is a description of the unique relationship of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. If Jesus had stayed on earth, his physical presence would have limited the spread of the gospel. But physically, he could be in only one place at a time. All right. After his ascension, he would be spiritually present everywhere through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was sent so that God would be with and within his followers after Jesus returned to heaven. His spirit would comfort them, guide them to know his truth, remind them of Jesus' words, give them the right words to say, and fill them with power. Yes. Jesus instructed his disciples to witness to people of all mm -hmm. nations about him. But they were told to wait first for the Holy Spirit. All right. God has important work for you to do for him. But All you right. must do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. We often like to get on with the job, even if it means running ahead of God. <laughs> but waiting is sometimes part of God's plan. 
Ooh. Are you waiting and listening for God's complete instruction? <laughs> or are you running ahead of his plans? We need God's timing and power to be truly effective. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was made available to all who believed in Jesus. We received the Holy Spirit or baptized with him when we received Jesus Christ as our Savior. The baptism of the Holy Spirit must be understood in the light of his total work in Christians. Uh, like other Jews, the disciples chafed under their Roman rulers. They wanted Jesus to free Israel from Roman power and then become their king. Jesus replied that God the Father sets the timetable for all events, worldwide, national Amen. and personal. Amen. If you want changes in your life that God hasn't yet made, don't become impatient. All and right. Stay, trust in his timetable. Yes. Power from the Holy Spirit is not limited to strength beyond the ordinary. That power also involves courage, boldness, yes. confidence, insight, ability, and authority. The disciples would need all these gifts to fulfill their mission. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can experience the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. God's word for God's people. Amen. <laughs> all right, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. I appreciate that. God bless you. Yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. That's okay. Um, um I was I attended my uh, cousin's home going yesterday. Um Carolyn Howell. And um, uh, after dad had told me um, earlier this week that he had passed, I was asking what happened. And uh, dad was just, you know, explaining to me that, that Carolyn, um, you know, would have health issues all along, but she rarely talked about it. I mean, I know that when we talked, we would talk, we would, we would talk in depth, but she wouldn't even tell me. She really never told me about her health issues. And um, from um, from uh, what Scott, her, her brother, Scott's uh, wife was telling me um, at the wake was that um, she had suffered a stroke on the 9th of December and then she passed on the 12th of December. And um, I was, I have been thinking about that um, along with what well, I had all, um, I've been praying about the subject of this particular uh, sermon for today. And then um, it just, I, I thought about, I, I started thinking about Catherine, uh, Carolyn, since dad talked to me on Wednesday. And uh, it kind of, some of it just kind of comes in because we're all concerned about our health. We hear about it, we talk about it, we're concerned about our health. And, you know, we, we, we could be, we can, uh, people talk about our, our mental health, people talk about our physical health, and then they don't just talk about your physical health, but then they break it down to components of your health or your body or whatever. You know, um, they talk about your heart health or they talk about digestive health. And um, um, Deacon James, you and I know they talk about joint health. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, um, you hear about colon and prostate health. 
you know, but with all of the stuff that they talk about when they talk about health, is is if I see a scarce amount of advertising when it comes to our spiritual health. And um that's something that's that 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 that's that was that was on me. So I I said, well, let's look into our spiritual health. And so that's what I want to talk to us about today. What um the one thing we do here in New Philly is we eat well. And uh I hate to say it, but according to the scale, I think I'm eating a little bit weller than everybody else. And so I got to do something about that. But as I thought about the message, as I thought, as I studied on um, the, the, the particular scripture passage, something came to me about the relationship that we should all have with God. And to bring this to a point, if we're obedient, if we're prayerful, if we're loving, then this should solidify our relationship with God because we are doing what he's directing us to do. We're doing what um, he has commanded us to do, not what he's asked us to do. Because if he asks us, that means that we have a choice. But if you got, if you're being commanded, you 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 do it. Uh, that's just like the military. You 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 don't get questions. You don't get requests. You get a command, and you carry out the command. And so, being obedient, being prayerful, being loving, these are commandments. God has commanded us to do this to solidify our relationship with him as well as with his people. But and if, if we're continuing to do what God commands us, then we will, um, let us say, you know how it says, uh, have you, you've heard the old expression, you are what you eat. Well, if we continue to feast on this, uh, these, these commandments of God, we feast on the word of God. We feast on the, uh, uh, the, the, the love of God. When we just continue to devour these things spiritually, what we will do in turn is become God's fat people. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you giving thanks. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you're doing, all that you, we are experiencing in our life, all that we're experiencing in our lives with others, all that we are experiencing, whether it's good or bad. But the fact is, Heavenly Father, we know that you are in the mix. You are a part of the whole situation. So what we will do is we will turn it over to you. We'll give it to you so that we have less worry so that we have less problems, so that we have less pains. And we say right now in the name of Jesus that we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're about to do. We thank you for each and every experience in our life that, that, that gives us a lesson, that teaches us Yes. Or that we can't do anything if we're not relying on you, if we're not yes. depending on you, if we're not praying to you, yes. if we're not going to you, if we're not seeking counsel from you, if we are just, if we think at any point that we can do any of this yes. ourselves, 
then we are doing a disservice to ourselves as well as to you. Yes. So we ask right now, as your word goes out, let it not come back for, let it not come back void, Heavenly Father. And we pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations in our hearts are acceptable in your sight. Oh yes. Lord, strength, our Redeemer, our God and Creator. Yes. These blessings we pray in your Son Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 So, um, um, we talk about our health, and of course, well, when we start talking about our health, we start talking about what we eat, and then um, you know how we eat, and things like that. And uh, uh, we 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 talk about our diets, and we 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 talking about our intake of of certain things, and and the things that we shouldn't eat, or and 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 all this other stuff, and uh, just um. I looked at that, and then I looked at how we can translate eating to um, our spiritual intake. When we are devouring, like I said, we're devouring the Word of God. When we're just we're just overeating when it comes to um, getting into God's Word, getting into the Bible, reading for understanding, reading for for. Uh, to for for justification reading for redemption reading for for your just for your spiritual well-being for good spiritual health you just got to just get into it and, yes. and you'll become yeah. One of God's fat people. Yes. Uh, because Jesus right here <clears throat> was saying, you know, that uh, it, it's not for you to, to know times or seasons which the Father has put yeah. in his own authority, yeah. but you re shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Yeah. And you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the yeah. end of the earth. And that because if you are, once again, you are obedient. Once you are doing what it is that God has commanded you to do, then you, you, you are on the road of becoming one of God's fat people. All right. <laughs> you are, you'll, be, you'll, you'll become one of God's fat people because yeah. of the fact that you are um, consuming. You're All right. Consuming. <laughs> his, his 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 instructions. You are you are uh uh like I said. You're overeating on his word. You're overeating on his commandments. You're you 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 just devouring his his um his activities. <laughs> activities because as as the deacon said, we're God's ambassadors here. <laughs> And so we are we are the representation to those who do not know Christ or do who don't know him well enough. We are that person's representation of what Christ is and what he does. Amen. Amen. And Amen. see, and if if that person, if the person does not see um, a fat Christian in front of them. If the person does not see a fat Christian who is walking in in in, in God's light, is walking, uh, is being obedient through with with every footstep. If that person does not see a fat Christian, then that person is not going is not subject to uh change his mind or his his spirituality that would and, and to a, in a manner right. is, uh that that exemplifies Christ because he feels right. like your life ain't exemplifying Christ so why should mine all right so I might be, I might be um, well off where I am, being a skinny Christian. All right. Or being, uh, <laughs> uh, being a non, a, a non Christian. All right. But so the thing, what, what, what has to happen then with us is we have to become God's fat people. 
Oh, we right. have to be in God's light. We have to be in God's service. We have yeah. to be in God's word. We have yeah. to be with God's people. We have yeah. to be, we have to do and say. And, we, and, and at every point, moment of the day, we have to be about what God has been about. Yeah. And that has been yeah. about the love for yeah. his people. Yes. Yes. So yeah. if you're not loving God's people, then you can't get fat. If you're not <laughs> serving God's people, you can't get fat. If you are not, uh, you you're not you're not studying God's word. You ain't gonna get fat. If you're not meditating on God's word, you ain't gonna get fat. If you are doing everything that's opposite, contradictory to the will and the purpose of God, you ain't gonna get fat. All right. <laughs> See, the thing is, to, be, to part of God's purpose is for you to be fat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See, I'm not gonna hold y'all long because I'm just gonna I'm getting ready to to, 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 to tell y'all what it is that we have to do to be God's fat people. And then I'm leaving it alone. The thing is, what we need to do, we need to know what is a fat person to God. All right. Come on. <laughs> you know what a fat person is to God? A person that is faithful, a person that is available, and a person that is teachable. All right. All right. That is a fat person to God. All you right. have to be faithful to God because number one, if you're not faithful, then everything else ain't going to even work. All right. Faith is All the right. substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is by faith that New Philadelphia was able to purchase all of that property. It is by yeah. faith that New Philadelphia was able to sell a portion of the property. It is yeah. by faith that New Philadelphia was able to pay off um, the, 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 uh, the, the, the property mortgage. It is by yeah. faith that we're going to move forward. It is by faith that we will build this, yeah. this edifice on uh, 22nd right. Avenue and 35th Street. It is by yeah. faith that we move. It is by faith that we yeah. prosper. It is by faith and not by anything else. All right. That gets us right. to move forward. The evidence of things not seen. If you might not see it now because it's not physically there, but you know you see it by faith. Because <laughs> right. you walk by faith and not by sight. Our yeah. spiritual eyes are open. We yeah. have the vision. Yes. And we're, the vision will come to fruition right yeah. there on that, that street corner. And then we'll continue to do what it is we're supposed to do for God and his people because New Philadelphia is a beacon in this community. All right. All right. <clears throat> You have to be faithful. My, Matthew 4, 18 through 20 said, and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. All right. They immediately, this is what the word says. They didn't think about it. They didn't, they didn't consult each other. They didn't have a discussion about it. They immediately left their nets and followed him. All right. You got to be available. Amen. 
you got to when 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 stuff is happening when when it's when it's time for you to change your ways when it's time for you to change your thinking when it's time for you to change your conduct when it's time for you to change those people places and things that are contradictory to the will of god all right it's time all right for you to drop your net yeah. When it's time for you to leave that net where it is, when yeah. you say, I have decided to follow Jesus, you yeah. should immediately do yeah. it because God wants All you right. to be available to him and to his son and available for his service. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yes. Amen. And after being faithful, after being available, then you are to be teachable. All right. <laughs> Mark, Mark 4th chapter, verses 10 through 12 say, but when he was alone, those around him with the 12 asked him about the parable. And he said to them, to you, it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. Seeing that they, so that seeing they may see, and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand. All right. They should turn and their sins be forgiven them. Yes. Teachable. Jesus spoke in parables for those who heard to learn. Yes. In other words, those people who would avail themselves, those, those who had availed themselves to Jesus, those who had availed themselves to, to God, those who availed themselves to the, 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 the uh, commandments of God, they had to learn. All right. They had to learn. There was something that they had to learn. There was something they had to do. But they didn't know exactly what it is they would be doing. So somebody had to teach them. And who right. else to teach them but the father who selected them? All right. All right. So the thing is, see, once that God sees that we're faithful, once the God sees that we're available, once God sees that we're teachable, once that he sees that we have exhibited all the properties and characteristics of being his fat people, fat people. Then <laughs> what we need to do is we need to exercise sound weight management. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I ain't talking about, I'm not talking about your weight, W-E-I-G-H-T. Why am not, we not even worried about that? What I'm talking about is your weight management. When I want, when I'm telling you to stop waiting for God to move when you ain't moving. All right. Uh -oh. I'm All right. To uh -oh. uh, stop waiting for intercession when you ain't even actively uh, participating in your own prayer life. All I'm right. telling you to stop. Well, for a blessing when you haven't put yourself in position for that blessing. See, yeah. you can't wait. You can't continue to wait like you're yeah. waiting on a bus, like you're waiting on Uber, like you're waiting on a taxi. You can't yeah. wait when it comes to your spiritual life. If yeah. you want to be a fat person in God's yeah. eyes, you, All right. to, you can't just sit and wait. You all got right. to do some waiting. What, and that's right. what I mean by that. By all means, I'm saying that you have to wait on the Lord because yeah. they that wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. All right, they all shall right. Come up with wings all like right. eagles. They shall run and not yeah. be hit. They shall walk yeah. and not faint. The other <laughs> what I'm saying is when you are you are exercising <laughs> sound weight management, when you are waiting on the Lord and not waiting for the Lord to do to move in your life, when you ain't moving in your life, you have you cannot be spiritually sedentary in yeah. your life. 
<laughs> what you have to do is you have to move. You have to exercise good weight management when you're waiting <laughs> on the Lord, when you're serving the Lord. Then you will become the fat person that God wants you to be. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, Praise God. God. Praise God. So eat up, New Philadelphia. That's <laughs> 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 all right. That was good, Pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord for it. Excellent, excellent message. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.